Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. So the solo game is played a little bit differently here. So if you only have one, you don't need to keep track of any fame points. You can keep this here if you want, just to kind of keep everything separated, but there's no reason to keep any score. So the game is going to work exactly like the original multiplayer game, which is a huge thumbs up for me. I like that very much. Although, when you have set up, you're not going to have any monsters down here. Normally, you're going to have three monsters there. So what's going to happen is each round, a monster is going to come out. So the game's going to work exactly like you want, but the monsters are going to work just like this. So when you defeat a monster, a new monster is not going to come out. So in a normal game, when you beat a monster, uh, uh, you'll have three down here. And then when you defeat a monster, that's fine. He'll come out and a new one will take his place. So there's always three. In this case, that's not going to be the case. So after each round, another monster will come out. So it's going to push you to come down here. So then you'll have another monster, etc. Then what will happen is if you defeat a monster, it will come out of the game and there'll only be one there, let's say, until the end of the next round when another monster will come out. And the monsters will continue to come out at the end of each round. If there's ever four monsters down here, you have lost the game. You've been overran and you lose. So managing this and being able to come back and defeat these monsters and keep going after them is uh, the name of this game rather than trying to score the fame points as before. So what do I think about this solo? I think it's really good. I like any kind of multiplayer game like this that when you play the solo, it's the same game. The only thing that is different is going to be the end game conditions of what you're trying to do here and what's going on here in the forest is going to be a tad different as you're just trying to beat these monsters. So... What it's going to do is, is give you something kind of kind of fight over, and yeah, depending on what monsters come out, things might be harder or different, but it's a puzzle you have to kind of put together, and a little bit of luck about what monsters are coming out in what row and what you're what you're prepared to fight. Uh, you know, if you had something that's three hearts and the next one, you know, would be uh, three swords, well, you, you may not be prepared for that as you go through, but I do like this puzzle you're going through, and it plays exactly like the base game. So you can bring in all these extra places if you want. You can play with all this. And if you want to get better at the game, you can most excellently come in here and play the solo, and it will make you better at the multiplayer. So I'm very happy with that. You get to use all the same components. There aren't any new components that are coming in. That's a plus, too, so I don't have this deck of cards they may not use. Non-solo players aren't paying for any upgrades or cards they might not use. And solo players, if you're going to play this just solo, uh, you're not playing for any multiplayer components that you don't need, so that's a plus and win here. How does the game stack up? Well, I think that it works. It's, it's the exact same game. You're just trying to manage this over here. And earlier, it's going to be a little tougher because you're not going to have all this stuff, and you got kind of got four rounds to kind of start managing this. You're going to feel the tension and the pressure coming up from these monsters coming out. But it's a really fun little initiative to try to get through that and be able to play that. Nothing else is going to move. Nobody else is going to be moving these guys around, so just you. You're going to be blocking yourself in this regard. So you're going to, to move these things and, and what you need to do to try to get down here. And, you know, I've only got, you know, so many turns to get this moving, blah, blah, blah. I need to get down here. So it's a really fun little environment that you're playing in. And it feels exactly like the base game, which is two thumbs up for that. So the solo experience, I think, is a win. If you're buying this game just for the solo experience, I think you could absolutely do that. And it's almost like you have a solo game. Then when you want to play with more people, it's available to you. Or the opposite. You have a multiplayer game, but if you want to play solo, it plays exactly the same. And that's a huge win for me. So the solo experience, two thumbs up. I like it a lot here. I might like the solo experience better than multiplayer because it's a family weight game. I think it really works well as a solo game because the experience is very simple, not a lot to keep track of. Uh, you only have the one person. You have to play multiple characters. There's no additional rules or content. Works really, really well. Excellent solo variant, one I highly recommend.